Hello and welcome. This is John from Sound Reaction. Today I'm going to cover a topic near and dear to my heart, and that is how can we crossfade clips on the same audio track. So what I've done here is I've got song A and song B. They're nothing like one another, so let's have a quick, quick listen to song A. All right, and song B. And now if I try to play song A, then song B, they're just going to jump right into each other. There's no crossfade, and let's fix that. Yeah, that's not good. So the first thing we need to do is uh, we need to basically import this audio into a new sampler. And to do that, we're going to create a new MIDI track and uh, add an instrument. And that instrument that we're going to add is Sampler. And I'm just going to call this two track, two track Sampler. Then we're going to create uh, two new blank MIDI clips, and we'll get to those in just a second. This MIDI clip I'm going to call Song A. And this MIDI clip I'm going to call uh, actually Song A MIDI just to keep it straight. And this clip, song B MIDI. Next, uh, with my sampler loaded, I'm going to click and drag song A into the drop zone. Actually, let's do it differently. With my sampler loaded, I'm going to open up my zone menu, my zone tab, and click and drag song A in, and click and drag song B in. And I'm just gonna rename these so they're consistent. All right. And I'm going to rename this sampler uh, two track sampler just to keep everything nice and neat. Uh, so what we see here in sampler is my two audio files, song A and song B. And I've got some options to, I can play with here. Uh, but the one thing you want to keep a lookout for is this filter global tab. Uh, first thing you want to do is turn filter off. I don't know why that's on by default, but it is. A couple other things you want to do. Set your global volume to 0 dB. And now you can treat your audio file as if it was a virtual instrument that has attack, decay, and release time. So if you were to press a key on a synthesizer, uh, in this case it would start immediately with zero milliseconds of delay. It would then go into a decay stage in 600 milliseconds and then release when you let go of the MIDI note or when you let go of the key over 50 milliseconds. We're gonna adjust that in a minute, but let's get back to uh, our MIDI tracks that are now going to trigger our samples. So on the song A MIDI track, I'm going to double click, scroll all the way down to the bottom of my piano roll, and you can put this wherever you want, but I just like to start at the bottom. I'm going to double click and insert a MIDI note, and just for the purposes of this video, I'm going to tell it it's 16 bars, and I will zoom out and take that out to 16 bars. Uh, now, on this uh, MIDI clip, I'm just going to rename it C-2 to keep everything straight in my mind. And on song B, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom, but this time I'm going to put the note on C-sharp-2. And uh, what that's going to allow me to do is trigger a different song when the note C-sharp-2 is played and I'm going to rename this C sharp negative two. Cool. So now uh, song A is C and uh, C negative two and song B is C sharp negative two. While I'm here I'm also going to adjust the velocity up to 127. Uh, this is important with sampler because it does respond to velocity. There's a way around this, but uh, we will um, just assume that we're starting at uh, 
one note being pressed at 127 uh, velocity. So back to our sampler uh, and our zone area here. We'll notice this green line. If I scroll to the end, it starts at C negative two and it goes all the way up to C eight. And this is the range of keys on the keyboard that will trigger the song or the sample. So just as a safety measure, I like to take this all the way down to my root note. And I'm just gonna click and drag all the way down to C negative two. And on song A, I'm gonna set my root note to C negative two. I'm just gonna click and drag all the way down to C negative two. It puts a little R on that note. And what that means is when C negative two note is played, it's gonna play at the correct speed uh, and or pitch, if you will. For song B, I'm gonna click and drag all the way up to the end. And this time I'm gonna stop at C negative, C sharp negative two. Let's see if I can bring that in. And I'm gonna set my root note of song B to C sharp negative two, right there. Now, I'm, I no longer need my audio files, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the whole track. When I hit play, uh, what's happening is the MIDI note is triggering the sampler slot A, uh, song A in this case. And when I hit B, same thing. It's going to play uh, the sampler in B. Uh, I think I have loop set here, so or my range is only set to like two bars, so I'm going to fix that. All right, let's try that again. And we can tell that's cleaner, but still not quite right. So let's let's add our crossfade element. We're going to go back to sampler. We're going to go back to the uh, filter global tab. And in release, I'm going to either click and drag up here to stretch the release time out to something obvious in this case, like uh, five seconds, uh, or just type it in, five seconds, 500 milliseconds. 1,000 milliseconds is five seconds. And I'll hit play on song A. And hit play on song B. And we hear that the release time is taking five seconds now uh, to release that MIDI note. Uh, so we can go either way. We can start with song B and go up to song A, and it'll still crossfade. harder to hear on song B because it's so loud, but we can we can fix that later. So uh, I hope this helps. This is just a real quick demonstration of how to do it on a two track. Things get a little bit more complicated on a multi track session, but we'll visit that next. And please, if you have any questions, comments or ideas for more videos, let me know in the comments. Thank you.